you've talked to people that uh, told stories of UFO encounters. Mm -hmm. What is the most fascinating to you about the stories of these UFO encounters that uh, that you've heard that people have told you? The similarity of them, uh, the uniformity of the of the stories. Now, I, I just want to say up front, a lot of people think that when I speculate. I believe something. Right. That's not true, right? Speculation is just creativity. Speculation is the beginning of hypothesis. None of what I hear in terms of the anecdotes do I necessarily believe are they true. But I still find them fascinating to listen to because at some level, they're still raw data and you have to listen. And once you start to hear the same story again and again, then you have to say, well, there might be something to it. I mean, maybe it's some kind of a Jungian uh, background in the human mind and human consciousness that creates these stories again and again. And it's coming out of the DNA. It's coming out of that pre-programmed something. And Jung talked quite a bit about this kind of thing, uh, the collective unconscious. But actually, one of the most interesting ones I find is this constant uh, message that you're not taking care of your world. And this came long before climate change. It came long before uh, many kinds of, you know, let's say current day memes uh, around, uh, you know, taking care of our planet, uh, pollution, etc. And so, you know, for instance, perhaps the best example of this, the one that I find the most fascinating, is a story out of Zimbabwe, uh, 50 or 60 children one afternoon in uh, Zimbabwe, it's a, it was a, a well-educated group of white and black children uh, who at lunchtime in the playground saw a craft uh, and they saw little men. And they all ran into the teachers and they told the same story and they drew the same pictures. And the message several of them got was, you are not taking care of your planet. And if Got, you know, there's actually a movie coming out uh, on this uh, episode. And 30 years later now, the people who were there, the children who have now grown up, say it, it happened to us. Now, did it happen? Was it some sort of hallucination or was it a, an imposed hallucination by something? Was it material? I, I don't know. But these kids were seven to 10 years old. You see them on video. Seven to ten year olds can't lie like that, and so you know whether it's real or not, I don't know. But I find that fascinating data. And again, it's the, it's these unconnected stories of individuals with the same with the same story that is worthy of further inquiry. Yeah. So. Here we are, humans with limited cognitive capacities, trying to make sense of the world, trying to understand what is real and not. We have this DNA that somehow in complex ways is interacting with the environment. And then we get these uh, uh, novel ideas mm -hmm. that come from the populace. And then they make us wonder about what it all uh, means. And so how to interpret it. If you think from an alien perspective, how would you communicate with other lifelike organisms? You perhaps have to find endpoints on this interaction between the, the DNA and its manifestations in terms of the, the, the human mind and the, how it interacts with the environment. So get some kind of, all right, what is this DNA? What is this environment? I have to get in somehow, <laughs> to, right? To like interact with it, to get to perturb the system, to where these little ants, human-like ants, get like excited and figure and see stuff something. out. Yeah, right. yeah, and then and then somehow steer them. Uh, first of all, for investigative purposes, to understand like oftentimes to understand a system, you have to perturb it. Exactly. It's yeah. like poke at it. To get, yeah. they get excited or not, and then the 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 other ways you want to, if you worry about them, you can steer in one direction or another. Mm -hmm. And this kind of idea that that we're not taking care of our world, um, that's interesting. I mean, that's comforting. That's hopeful because that means the greater intelligence, which is what I would hope, 
We want to take care of us. Like we want to take care of the gorillas in the national parks in Africa. Yeah, but right? we don't want to take care of cockroaches. So there's a line we draw. Yeah. So you have to hope that... <laughs> right now we're a bunch of angry monkeys. And, you know, maybe whatever these intelligences are, are also keeping an eye on us. You know, that you don't want a bunch of, you know, you don't want the, the angry monkey troop stomping around the local galactic arm. Do you think these folks are telling the truth? Do you think they saw what they say they saw? I think they saw what they said they saw. But I also think they saw what they were shown. I mean, if you go back to the whole notion of, okay, how long has this been around? It didn't just start showing up in 1947. Right. There are stories going back, uh, you know, into the 1800s of people who saw things in their farming, in their farm fields in the U.S. It's in, it's in, it's in local newspapers from the 1800s. It's fascinating. But if you can go even further back, you know, so to your point of how are, how would you as a higher intelligence represent yourself to a lesser intelligence? Well, let's go back to pre-civilization. Maybe you show yourself as the spirits in the forest and you give messages through that. Once you get a little bit more civilized, then you show yourself as the gods. And then you're God. Well, we don't believe in God anymore necessarily. Not everybody does. So what do we believe in? We believe in technology. So you show yourself as a form of technology, right? But the common thread is you're not alone. And there's something else here with you. And there's something that's, as you said, watching you, and at least watching over your shoulder. But I, I, I think that like any good parent, you don't tell your student everything. You make them learn. And learning requires mistakes, because if you tell them everything, then they get lazy. <laughs>